Iranian leaders blame the U.S. for their current status. They believe themselves to be a godly society, and they see us as their tormentors and their oppressors. It's uh, part of their uh, reason for being. They believe Iran to be one of the great countries of the world. They see its current status as one of the world's weaker powers as being a temporary aberration. But how far will Iran go to resurrect its power? <laughs> to many Westerners, Iran presents a frightening prospect. A radical Islamic Republic that appears intent on becoming a nuclear power. Iranians are the descendants of one of the world's great civilizations, the Persian Empire. For over 2,000 years, since the time of Cyrus the Great, the Persians were a proud and powerful people. The borders of the Middle East have been drawn and redrawn for centuries by tribal disputes and foreign conquests. Countries and kingdoms have come and gone. Only Iran, or Persia, as it was known before 1935, has remained. Iran is a country that has existed more or less within the same boundaries for more than 2,000 years. They existed long before the United States of America was even a dream. The fact that they are a very ancient country and uh, are not going to be pushed around or lectured to by anyone else. Iran is not Arab. It's not Arab in, 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 uh, in speech or in tradition. It, in fact, is Iranian or Persian. That's a so totally different language. And Iranians often get very upset if they're confused for Arabs. If you sit with almost every Iranian and start a, com start a conversation about anything, it ends up usually in a discussion where people talk about Iran as the greatest civilization of all time. Unlike U.S. forces, Iranian troops readily engage in unconventional warfare. The use of insurgents, guerrillas, terrorists, a few missiles here and there, uh, they have a great capability. And that's the one I would fear the most. And if you look at Iraq, that's what's the most effective right now. Iran has almost 800,000 men in its armed forces. In addition to standard troops, Iran has recently made efforts to bulk up its 7 million man besiege force, the human wave that was so successful in the Iran-Iraq war. Experts say that a ground invasion of Iran could require almost 300,000 troops. Even if we wanted to do it, we don't have anything like the forces for it. Our forces are already greatly overcommitted around the world given their size. Iran has three times the population, four times the land area of Iraq. There are very few people in Washington who are seriously contemplating an invasion. There is another concern. Even with the most precisely targeted air campaign, once the bombs begin to fall, any chance of winning favor with the fiercely proud Iranian people will disappear. We have to recognize that airstrikes against Iran would mean going to war with the Iranians. And what we've seen from the Iranians is they don't take these sort of things lying down. Iran could unleash the terrorist network Hezbollah on U.S. interests in the Persian Gulf and the U.S. itself. What Iran will do in the aftermath of an American attack is hard to say. What they could do is terrible to contemplate. They could certainly turn up the heat on the American presence in Iran. Uh, I mean, if you think the suicide bombers in Iraq are bad now, uh, just imagine what would happen if they were going off uh, every hour or every half hour. I would speculate that many U.S. forces, the bases in Kuwait, in Iraq, uh, and other locations in the region are targeted by the Iranian Military Missile Command, uh, as well as targeted by uh, terrorist organizations to, to strike. 